Japan's lawmakers approved a bill on Friday that gives the government authority to designate official information as special secrets. The law gives strict penalties for those who leak the information. NHK World's Tomoko Kamata has the details. Lawmakers with the ruling coalition used their majority in the upper house to cut off debate on the secrecy bill. Then they voted in favor of it and made it law. This law will enforce the security of the nation. It is our duty to fully explain its purpose to the people. It's regrettable that the ruling party is forced through the bill with their power of numbers. The law gives senior government officials authority to define information as special secrets. That would include material related to defense, diplomacy, counterintelligence, and counterterrorism. Public servants found guilty of leaking these secrets could be jailed for up to 10 years. Citizens who deliberately obtain this type of information could also face punishment. The law is closely related to Japan's new National Security Council. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe set up the body to streamline the analysis of information gathered by various ministries and foreign countries. Senior officials say the secrecy law is essential for convincing other governments that they can be trusted to share intelligence. However, some, including international human rights groups, writers and scientists, are worried about the power the law gives Japanese leaders. Members of the country's largest lawyers group argue the legislation could allow government officials to classify information arbitrarily. Tsutomu Shimizu says it undermines the public's right to know. And the possibility of long prison terms will intimidate whistleblowers. Officials can't activate this law just by itself. They need to create detailed regulations, operations manuals and guidelines. We need to keep an eye on government officials so they don't undermine human rights. Prime Minister Abe has vowed to set up panels to oversee the decisions officials make under the secrecy law. And he says experts will draw up guidelines for what would constitute classified information. Critics say Abe was in too much of a hurry to pass the bill and lawmakers couldn't debate the details thoroughly. Japan has fallen back into fascism after 68 years. A senator yelled out, this is the way the reign of terror begins. Then other physically restrained him. The Empire of Japan surrendered on September 2nd, 1945. 68 years later, Japan has fallen right back into fascism. Despite large protests outside the Japanese Senate, compromised of more than 7,000 demonstrators, so outraged was opposition lawmaker Hirokaza Shiba in the committee meeting Thursday that he rose from his seat and shouted, this is the way the reign of terror begins. His fervor led to his fellow lawmakers having to physically restrain Shiba as tensions in the meeting reached fever pitch. The secrecy bill passed today, and here's what another Japanese senator had to say. The path that Japan is taking is the recreation of a fascist state. I strongly believe that this secrecy bill represents a planned coup d'etat by a group of politicians and bureaucrats. Just like the U.S., Japan is responding by banning journalism. The Guardian notes whistleblowers and journalists in Japan could soon find themselves facing long spells in prison for divulging and reporting state secrets, possibly including sensitive information about the Fukushima nuclear disaster. One editorial writer said it's a threat to democracy. It can be used to hide whatever the government wishes to keep away from public scrutiny. The justice minister refused to rule out police raids of newspapers suspected by breaking the law. Indeed, the number two government official said last week that protest equals terrorism. Washington, for its part, has long supported stronger secrecy laws in Japan. Abe plans to create Japan's version of the U.S. National Security Council. 
Following the developments is NHK World Senior Political Commentator Masayo Nakajima, and he joins us now in the studio for his analysis. Masayo, mm -hmm. so why did Prime Minister Abe push to establish the National Security Council at this time? Well, the NSC is supposed to help the government deal quickly with diplomatic and security challenges. For example, if a country were to threaten Japan, the NSC would, in principle, help the administration take more coordinated action. Prime Minister Abe tried to create a National Security Council when he was first in office, but his efforts failed. Now, with a strong majority, his Liberal Democratic Party and its coalition partner were able to get the bill passed. Mm -hmm. They argue the security environment in East Asia is becoming more severe. North Korea's missile and nuclear programs pose a threat to Japan. And China is becoming more active in the region. There are critics who have disagreed with uh, Abe for launching the National Security Council. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, some critics say the NSC will help the Abe administration strengthen security ties with the U.S. They worry this could put J Japan at risk of getting involved in a real conflict or war. Some say there should be certain measures for people to check what leaders talk about and decide in the council. The Abe administration responded by adopting a resolution allowing records of NSC meetings to be kept in a way that does not compromise national security. However, those records could be kept confidential under the secrecy bill the Prime Minister is trying to pass. If that's the case, it would take some time to check what's going on behind the scenes. How would the opposition lawmakers change things if they could? Well, some opposition lawmakers say that NSC may not work effectively without an enhanced intelligence and information gathering service. And they propose setting up a special agency, much like the CIA in the U.S. and MI6 in Britain. But members of the Abe administration have ruled that out for now. Or they'll continue to depend on current ministries and agencies as sources. The Defense and Foreign Ministries and the National Police Agency mainly. The Prime Minister appears to be focusing for now on coordinating intelligence and policies. Masayo, thanks as always. U.S. President Barack Obama has indicated that the U.S. may allow Iran to enrich uranium for peaceful purposes with strict monitoring and constraints. It is in America's national security interests, not just Israel's national security interests or the region's national security interests to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Obama spoke at a forum on U.S.-Israel relations in Washington. He talked about the interim deal reached last month between Iran and six world powers. They agreed to relax some of the sanctions on Iran in return for curbing its nuclear program. We can envision an end state that gives us an assurance that even if they have some modest enrichment capability, it is so constrained and the inspections are so intrusive that they, as a practical matter, do not have breakout capacity. Observers say Obama suggested that the U.S. may allow Iran to enrich uranium in the future if it proves to be for peaceful use. Israel had criticized the nuclear deal strongly, saying it's only weakening the pressure on Iran. Inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency are visiting a heavy water reactor under construction in Iran. The facility is at the center of concerns that Iran is trying to obtain weapons-grade plutonium. Iran's Atomic Energy Agency says the inspectors began their visit to the site in the city of Iraq on Sunday. They're believed to be interviewing officials at the facility. A heavy water reactor makes it easier to extract plutonium from spent nuclear fuel. Iran is suspected of aiming to produce plutonium for weapons use. But Iranian officials say they want to produce radioactive materials for the medical treatment of cancer and other diseases. The visit is the first inspection since Iran and the nuclear watchdog agreed in November on a new framework for cooperation. The country had denied the IAEA access to the reactor for more than two years. 
Iran also agreed with six world powers last month to suspend the construction of the reactor as part of the first step to be carried out over the next six months. Six men suspected of stealing a truck carrying a load of radioactive material in Mexico are in hospital for possible radiation exposure. A group of gunmen hijacked a truck outside Mexico City on Monday. It was carrying a Cobalt-60, a radioactive substance used for medical applications. Police later found the radioactive substance about 60 kilometers away. The thieves had removed the radioactive material from its protective case. Health officials say six men aged between 16 and 38 visited the hospital between late Thursday and early Friday under police guard. They were tested for signs of radiation exposure. The officials say one of them was treated after complaining of a headache and nausea. Police say they detained the six men based on the truck driver's statement. The authorities plan to investigate the case further after the men have finished undergoing medical tests. A symposium has been held to commemorate the 50th anniversary of a landmark ruling on the U.S. atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The ruling found that the attacks were in breach of international law. The Tokyo District Court ruling in December 1963 said the attacks inflicted unnecessary pain on many civilians. About 80 people, including atomic bomb survivors and legal experts, attended Sunday's event in Tokyo. An atomic bomb survivor said Japan should change its policy of depending on the U.S. nuclear umbrella and do more to abolish nuclear weapons. I believe that no one would think of using nuclear weapons if we share information on their dangers. The Japanese government has distanced itself from movements that try to ban nuclear arms. But in October, the government signed a UN statement for the first time that says they should not be used under any circumstances. Look at what your pen is going through. 